Thank you. Hello and welcome to our weekly look at Head of the Markets. And it's been a tumultuous few days uh, in world events, of course. Um, on a market front, though, uh, we are looking at uh, bond yields coming off their highs. They slipped to the lowest since uh, towards the end of September. So we saw the US 10 year uh, nudging lower throughout the week to uh, its weakest in about three weeks. Uh, US inflation was a slight upside surprise. Uh, FOMC minutes uh, suggested that the focus is more on the how long rather than how high, but most members still think that another hike uh, may be warranted or will be warranted. Coming up to this week, uh, all eyes, of course, will be on um, the situation in the Middle East, what sort of uh, permutations there are on that front and what sort of uh, market impact there could be. We did see oil gapping higher, but the geopolitical risk premium uh, in energy markets is apt to uh, scale back uh, rather quickly uh, normally. Um, we have seen that happen before. Um, so we'll look to see whether or not the market, more sort of underlying fundamentals in the oil market start to reassert themselves. But otherwise, um, market attention will be on that, on that side of things. But particularly in bond yields, I think as they've come down, that has driven stocks higher. And really we've seen this sort of playing out uh, for the rest of the week still. Uh, the bond market being in charge. Uh, it's picking up some bid because of the geopolitical situation. So flight to safety is uh, very much um, part of the equation there. Um, and we'll look to see whether or not that plays out over the course of the uh, next few days, whether or not the situation in the Middle East escalates or not. Um, coming up, uh, we've got Japanese inflation data. That'll be interesting because the BOJ is wondering how and when uh, and whether it will exit yield curve control and negative interest rates. That's towards the end of the week on Friday. Um, we've also got US retail sales. They were proving um, stickier than thought, but that's mainly because of higher gasoline prices. So that's feeding into that higher inflation uh, story, that sticky inflation story. Um, underlying growth still quite weak. But it really, it's, um, it's earnings that will be the main focus for the week with Tesla and Netflix among the big hitters reporting. Uh, Tesla, uh, so deliveries increased 27% in the third quarter uh, from last year, but there was a sequential decline from the second quarter and it was below uh, already reduced uh, Wall Street expectations. Critical, of course, is the um, price cuts that Tesla has been carrying out and that is having an impression on margins. We've seen margins compressed by about eight percentage points. Those industry leading margins, let's not forget, down from uh, uh, down eight percentage points to 18.2% uh, gross margin in the second quarter. Is there further mar margin compression that will, will or should or ought to perhaps have an impact on the stock? So far this year though, Tesla's been absolutely killing it and uh, 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 up well over 100% for the year. So whether or not um, uh, actual uh, things like mundane things like profits and losses and so on actually affect Tesla stock will remains to be seen. And then otherwise, as I say, there's Netflix, of course, streaming wars, the impact of that strike in Hollywood, um, whether or not people are signing up in great numbers for its ad supported service or not, and what sort of competition is uh, uh, waning or increasing from the likes of Disney and so on. So keep your eyes on that Netflix story as well. And then there's a couple of banks still to report as well. Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, uh, also due up on the tape. So that's it for now. Cool.